man. No? No. She's not the romantic kind. She always says no. Camera, film, darkroom. I'm a photographer for Life magazine. Say, I once had a brownie number Shut two. Up, Patsy. Are you? How would you like to focus on a little blonde? Well, I wouldn't mind. Well, there she is. Stop! Hey, look at the order she promoted. Baby! Come on, guys. Hey, this is oh, right. Right. Oh, Mitch, I got you fella. No kidding? Honestly, Goldie, I'm ever so much obliged. <laughs> Oh, I'm Mitch. Right. Who are you? I'm... I'm your fellow. Oh, I'm awfully glad to know you. Mutual. Well, come on, let's, let's go. go. Come on. Get us here. Yeah, but uh, I'm going to come out. Whoever goes to hell? The tree surgeon. And what packer? The cherry phosphate crowd. You want to go to Monterey with me? Yeah, I guess I do. But uh, first, I'm supposed to meet Dorinda Hatch. Who? Dorinda Hatch, the woman who wrote the book. What book? You mean you never heard of The Lady Says No, the number one bestseller? I never. Me either. Well, this book is just about slowed up kissing and, and, and that sort of thing to, to a standstill. What for? She's against it.
Good evening. My name Mr. is... Mr. Shelby, I presume. Do come in. We've been expecting you. Thank you. Such a pleasure to meet a man who's taking pictures all over the world. Oh, my niece. How do you do? I was just going to ask you that. Oh. I do fine, thank you. Yes, I can imagine it. Uh, young man, what pictures did you want to take? Oh, the pictures. Well, a couple of you at your desk, and maybe one knitting and feeding the cat. The cat? We must get you in on these. Oh, I certainly hope so. Yes, I hope so, too. Well, we'll have to arrange the interview. The interview? Well, just a few simple questions. How you came to write, the lady says no, and that sort of oh, thing. Oh, the idea originated entirely with my niece. Oh, clever girl, helping your Aunt Dorinda, huh? She's my Aunt Alice. You see, I am Dorinda Hatch. You are? You mean you wrote that book about the... You did? Yes, I did. Yes, she did. Her own thoughts entirely. I contributed nothing. So now, Anna, no, you help me. You Excuse know. me. I gotta use the telephone. She's with me. Glad to meet you, Annie. I didn't catch the name. Hello, Goose? This is Midge. The name is Midge. Hey, by any chance, did I have a date with you for tonight? I was afraid of that. Yeah, well, it's all off. I busted my ankle or something. Yeah, it's all full of twice as normal. I think I fell down some stairs. Should she be walking? Plucky little kid. Standing you up? When I can't even stand up on my own two feet? Oh, really? Well, luck for luck. Some people. People are disappointing. You can give that one both barrels, baby. I beg your pardon? She endorses what you say. Look, special favor, will you take me home right away? Well, what's eating you? I'm not going anywhere with him. I must have had a temporary screw loose when I married that viper. He did it again. Yes. What's he do to her? Talks about the girls he used to go with. Oh, my... Oh, but that's oh. vicious. She ought to read my book. She ought to bounce it off his head. <laughs> Ah, oh, gee, dry up, honey. You're not at home. Who are these people? You got me. Okay, okay. As usual, I'm the heel and you're the angel. <laughs> I apologize. Well, you should, upsetting her like this. She's so sensitive. But I'm supposed to ignore this little matter of her and that supply sergeant. I was only trying to get you a couple of new shirts. Oh, you sweet thing. What a shame, and she was doing it for you. <laughs> doing it for me? Look at this poor girl, the state she's in. Oh, what a price to pay for the little pleasure she gets out of you. It don't cost her a cent. Does it, Goldie? I pay for it. And is it worth it? No. No. Okay, okay. If it costs you so much, forget it. Oh, gee, you sure fix things. He doesn't love me. Of course he does. I hate him. Well, well don't let him get away with it. Tell him so. I certainly will. You wouldn't be putting this in your article, would you? Is there anything better? Well, I hope you're satisfied. Hey! Well, come on, let's go. If we're going, come on if you're coming. Um, I have a little business to attend to in Monterey, so should we say um, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, Cypress Point, and you'd, uh, you'd better wear your shorts. My shorts? But why? Oh, human interest. I still say you wrote the book. Well, good night. Typical male. Conceited, cocksure. They all do it the same. I can't imagine whatever they'll find to do in Monterey. They'll think of something. Lovely day for the pictures. You're um, not exactly in your shorts. I uh, wasn't sure it was dignified. On a beach? My readers wouldn't expect me to. 
I'm one of your readers. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Oh, you have read my book. Sure, last night. Simply fascinating. Thank you. Men don't usually like it. Don't get me wrong, I hated it. Reminded me of the work of some wild-eyed old buzzer that hasn't been kissed since Calvin Coolidge was president. It may fascinate you to know. I wrote the book. Would you care to see the original manuscript in my own handwriting? Oh, sure, you wrote it. But your Aunt Alice thought of it. But from what I read, you're a very mixed-up young lady. My book gave you that impression? Well, I did get in kind of late. Maybe I skimmed it too fast and missed the point. Maybe you did. It seemed to me you were suggesting that boys and girls should walk on opposite sides of the street. Is this, uh, this thing necessary? It's part of my outfit. Oh, don't you think it takes away from the dignity of the thing? Let's give the impression in this picture that you kind of float through life without touching the ground. Huh? You mind? I might as well take your gloves. I suppose you know your business. Oh, that's good. Now against those rocks. Now, the idea of this picture is that those rocks will look hard and cold and sort of dead, and you'll try to look warm and soft and full of life. Can you handle it? I think so. And what about that hat? It's a nice hat. Oh, yes, I know. Women do wear hats, especially if they write books like mine. Well, the way I see it, you wrote the book with your brain, and your brain is normally in your head, so let's take a look at your head, huh? That's logical. Chin up. Shoulder. Mm. Nice neck. Get it over with. Oh, now we must take our time. This picture's for Life magazine. Five million readers, four readers for every copy. Twenty million people are going to see this picture. Are you sure you're giving them the right idea of me? You know, I wish you'd take off that jacket. Got what you want. Not yet. Too bad you didn't wear your shorts. You couldn't have read my book from what you're asking. The more I get into this, the more I feel sure you ought to go home and put on those shorts. All right. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. Further proof. Proof of what? Proof you never wrote that book. I did, with my own little head. What a waste of your own little head. Want to convince her you'd have been for our side. Your side? Us people who believe in marriage and that sort of thing. Oh, I advocate marriage, but under my own system. Well, under your system, people have been better off pitching horseshoes. All your actors are slinky pose. Who, me? Then I'll give you what you came for. Okay, shoot. You may relax. Was it what you wanted? All my life. Well, you asked for glamour. You know I can't use that. Oh, that's too bad then. Because that's all the posing I'm going to do for you. What do you mean? I mean, good day. <laughs> How did it go? He made fun of me in my book. Oh, natural male insolence is to be expected. Well, I just won't see him anymore. Oh, no, and why won't we, dear? Well, he intends to make a public jackass out of me. Oh, I'd like to see the man that could do that. Good morning. Well, well, well. Look who's here. Dear old Uncle Matt. Me darling, mm -hmm. me. Be warm and ever-loving wife. Did you hear the bell ring, Aunt Alice? I thought I locked that door. Welcome home, Uncle Matt. Welcome home. Outside, Matthew Hatch. Mrs. Matthew Hatch, have you forgotten our tender marriage vows? I wish I could. Wheresoever thou dwellest, there dwell I. Whither thou goest, there go I. Which is my bedroom? Oh, Dorinda, don't let him. 
Wheresoever thou dwellest, Uncle Matt, it's going to be elsewhere. Now, now, please leave. One thing I cannot stand is insincerity. Insincerity? Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Dear Uncle Matt, I love you. Come home. Signed, Dodie. I wrote that when I was five years old. Yes, you showed an early talent. Too bad you had to waste it on that malicious twaddle of a book. And you're so sincere. You go gallivanting off any time you please. For months, for years at a time. And each time you come back, you upset us. And this time it took Dorinda's book to dredge you up from nowhere. Stay out of this, you mealy mouthed tarin. <gasps> you virago, you cassowary. Dorinda. Vegetable. What right have you to call her name? She's my wife, isn't she? Pig. Now, Alice, that's not like you at all. Well, I'm sorry. And now you're on our necks again. Serves you right for insulting the intelligence of that book. Oh, I notice you're here to sponge the profits. Tell me, where did you get the idea that all men were no good? From you. Well, there's your book. I suppose I'm entitled to eat on that, aren't I? Oh, Dorinda, tell your uncle we'll give him a hundred dollars to leave town. Dorinda, kindly notify your Aunt Alice that I wouldn't leave for a thousand. A thousand? Oh, both of you, please. Remember all the happy times we had? Remember Rover, our little dog? Oh, stop it. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Oh, please don't. Oh, Dorinda, he doesn't care for us. He only turned up this time because he's broke. Dorinda, tell your Aunt Alice that's a lie. It's no use, Uncle Matt. This time you can't bother us. All right. <clears throat> I'll go. You're cordially invited to attend a tea and open forum honoring Miss Dorinda Hatch. I accept. Oh, oh, well, no. There'll be a discussion of Miss Hatch's book. Good. I should be a sensation on that subject. Uncle Matt, you can. Open to the public. But you'll heckle me. Why not? A little public debate on your crazy book. Oh, he'll cause trouble. Give him anything he wants. Room and board, and my lips are sealed. Oh, Uncle Matt, you're a terrible man. What do you want here? The love and affection of my family, madam. I'm glad to see you, Uncle Matt. <laughs> interlude. But now we must hurry on to our period of questions and answers. Does anyone have a question? Uh, yes? I should like to ask Miss Hatch. In your last chapter, you say that a girl shouldn't let a man get away with whistling at her. Huh. Did you say something, Mr. Shelby? I said... <laughs> ah! Did you have any further thoughts on the subject? No, I think a simple ha ah, just about covers everything. Women love to be whistled at, don't you? 
Well, I... Well, what if I didn't? What could I do about it? Yeah, what could she do about it? Well, if you'd be kind enough to volunteer your services, I'd be glad to demonstrate. Would you? Don't go up there, me boy. Oh, what can happen? <laughs> this is awfully kind of you. <laughs> no charge. Well, when do I whistle? If you'll just lean against that corner drugstore. Corner drugstore here? Over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, just assume that cocky attitude. Cocky attitude. <laughs> Fine. He is now ready to whistle at the girl to make her angry. Her problem is to keep calm and make him angry instead. You think you can make me angry? Here I come. Did you whistle, sir? Yes. Oh, I'm so flattered that you noticed poor little me. <laughs> That's all right. I can hardly believe I'm worthy to be whistled at. Oh, sure you are. <laughs> lucky, lucky me. Whistled at with my lipstick all smeared. <laughs> Oh, what should I? <laughs> Angry yet? <coughs> Not a bit. Oh, you're crowding me. Oh, you make a cozy little crowd, though, don't you think? Oh, my goodness, yes. Yes. I didn't bring my other suits. Aren't you a teensy bit angry? Oh, how could you make me angry? I can't imagine. <laughs> oh, very funny. Yes, indeed. Mm, never a dull moment at the old Pine Inn. <laughs> Sorry that you whistled at me. <laughs> I miss all this. Never. You have the sweetest temper of any man I have ever met. No, oh, I can take a joke. <laughs> Mad now? Not yet. Soon? <laughs> Maybe. Feel down? Feel fine. Aren't you sorry that you whistled at me? No regrets. Bet you wouldn't feel so chipper if I hit you in the face with a piece of pie. Oh, now, wait a minute. This is really ridiculous. Could I trouble one of you ladies for a piece of pie? Oh, what kind? Banana cream? Thank you. Look, uh, this went out with silent pictures. You, you, you don't want to, to waste that uh, piece of pie. Oh, it wouldn't be a waste at all. Just a way to prove my point. Whistle at me once more. Yeah! Angry, yes? Yes! Are you all right, me boy? Pie of all the booby-heading crackpots. <laughs> Alice. You oblige me one thing, Matthew. You take your share of the rap, the little monster. I've been trying to hammer some sense into her ever since that fateful day. You 
should never have come home drunk on her 12th birthday when you promised to take her to the zoo. You know, you said that. Why, the poor little thing was... The poor little thing was disappointed in you. She was crushed. I wish you'd stop all this poor little thing. Well, she was crushed. Well, why don't you uncrush her? Yes. I step aside. I handed you on a plate. I crushed her on her 12th birthday. Now you uncrush her. Matthew, I'll do that thing. I'll, I'll straighten her out. This is noble of you. Noble. Great heavens, boy. That's you. Certainly it's me. I took it myself. Of me. Me, boy. You're an author. I'm proud of you. Permit me to present you with this pencil, personally sharpened by Matthew Huntington Hatch, uncle and childhood tutor of Dorinda Hatch. Oh, Matthew, I'm touched. Now allow me to present you with a copy of my book. You like it, but hasten. I hasten. that I'm complaining to life through my lawyers about your conduct toward me. You're antagonistic and hostile and snippy about my book. The picture story is off. You're supercilious and insufferable. Also too fresh. I hope I've seen the last of you. Sincerely yours. Couldn't I end it with regards? After what you've said. Well, I, I wouldn't want to hurt his feelings. Oh, Dorinda. Thank you. I usually get a dime. Well, you just save your money, little boy. Oh, what's this? Oh, my gosh. If he ever sends this in, I... Well, I won't let him get away with it. Shelby. Who is it? Dorinda Hatch. Who? Dorinda. Oh, Mr. Shelby. Why, Dorinda Hatch? I've got to talk to you. Oh, come on in. You come out. You come in. Way you operate. Yep. Well, this is where I do. You're pretty successful, aren't you? Oh, I do all right. I suppose you know why I'm here. Am I going to get it? How bad do you want it? Bad enough to ask you? Oh, that's bad. Well, there's something I... This kind of shapes up into, a, into an old-fashioned situation, doesn't it? What do you want? A little token of love and affection? No. Just one? You know it's against my principles. Not mine. No, I couldn't. Uh, no. All right. 
You keep yours, and I'll keep mine. Just one? Just one. Naturally, you have the whole place rigged up to photograph this. <laughs> no, no, no fix. Nobody watching? All right, make it snappy. Well, take it easy. This has got to be good. I'll take care of my half. You take care of yours. Well, with your lack of experience? But I have instincts, don't I? Don't I? We'll see. What's the matter? I don't understand what you're trying to do. I'm going to kiss you, remember? Well, hold still. Things slowly, shall we? All right, what comes first? First, you put your left hand on my right shoulder. What's next? Now, uh, try not to be alarmed, but I am slowly, but gently, sliding my left arm around your waist. Well, what do I do with my other hand? Uh, put it behind my neck. I didn't know it was so complicated. Now, let me just tighten up a big, a big moment. Oh, easy. You're trying to kill a guy? Okay. This is it. Should I hold my breath? Mm, optional. Should I close my eyes? If it helps. Now just try to relax. Concentrate. What are you thinking about now? I'm sorry I hit you with that piece of pie. Was it all right? Hmm. Was it? Odd. What's odd? Odd effect. Wasn't it like other girls? Oh, not the slightest. Not like any other girl? Well, there was a girl in Sioux Falls, but well, that was a very cold day, and it wasn't very fun. All this humor at my expense is not in our little deal. I came across that. Now, how about you? All right. There you are. And there's the negative. And here's one for you. What do you mean? You don't want me to do the story about you? I forbid it. Well, it wasn't any good anyway. But you came all the way down. Well, just an excuse to go fishing. I don't see if that's the case, why you went to all the trouble to kiss me. Yeah, hardly worth the bother, you're right. You did feel some way about it, didn't you? To be brutally frank, I'd rather kiss a stone wall and go through that again. Then you didn't. Well, don't worry about it. I'm sure you're talented at other things. Y you wouldn't like to try it again, would you? Oh, not again, thank you. I could try harder. No, it's no use. I know I could do but better. You've either got it or you haven't. You just don't put your heart into it. I promise to. Well, you had to put your shoulder into it, too. I promise. Oh, all right. But just one. Just one. Oh, come on, come on, snap it up. I haven't got all night. I've got a date in Monterey. Maybe it would help me if you closed your eyes. Oh, okay. Try and put something into it this time. Oh, I promise. I'll give it everything I've got. You scorpion! You snake in the grass! That's Dorinda. Where's your key? In Bill Shelby's trailer. What were you doing in his trailer? Kissing him. Open that door. Coming? Will wonders never cease. Hold your horses, little girl. 
You kissed him. That's amazing. I also slugged him. Is that amazing? You love him. You hate him. You want to go back to his trailer. If I did, I would. You cannot obey the savage beat of the primitive drums of instinct. What in the world have you been reading? William Shelby. How could that hyena write a book? With a native girl, Marimba, as me guide, I took me gun and pushed into the interior. I'm not interested in Mr. Shelby's tropical frolics. Maybe you have them on your mind unconsciously. Don't be ridiculous. And I'm quite conscious, thank you.
dressed. We're going to Monterey. Now listen, I wash my hands of the entire affair. And for all I'm your uncle and not betray my friend. Good night. Uncle Matt, you can't. Uh, what's yours? Oh, whatever. Well, whatever. I have no license to make one. Well then, the wharf rat special. Lady, the special. If I make you one, it's on your conscience, not mine. It's about time I had something on my conscience, don't you think? Okay, lady, you'll get it. Uncle Matt, he left, I saw him. He did? Oh, that man, he can't... Uh, you were the house of Buck, lady. What? Oh, dear. I came out without my... There. Now I have a mortgage on you. Oh, this is awfully nice of you. I don't deserve to have you rescue me after the way I kissed you. I think nothing of it. I'm surprised to see you in a joint like this. Oh, I only came to study the grislier side of life. Oh. Well, you know Midge. Hello. Potsy. Hello. Goldie. And that is Goose, your date. Hi. Oh. Nice to know you. Now, won't you sit down, please? Waiter. Waiter, bring over some drinks for my friends, huh? Hey, cost me a buck to pick her up. Oh, any time, any time. I will repay the dollar first thing. I'll give it to him. You owe him now. Oh, no hurry, no hurry. You and me, huh, kitten? If you say so, Goose. I get a warm feeling out of you. You do? Mm-hmm. Well, I can feel it getting warm. Oh, I'm so sorry, my big elbow. I... Just hold that mood till I get back, baby. Trouble with Goose. Hey, Dad. Say, haven't you got a boyfriend of your own? Bother him. I did. And now, if you don't mind, I'd like to bother yours. You got a crust like a honeymoon biscuit. Yeah, I'm surprised. You horn in here and then take over. May I take over now? Do you mind? Certainly I mind. Oh, the nerve. Hey, why don't you get lost? Pardon me. Will you do me one favor? What? Oh, I hate to ask this of you. But will you shut your big face? Now that's about all. I don't have Sit to Sit down, Major. Well, oh, she... Eat your child, Robbie. Right back. So I'm not going to... Why, she can... Why, that... Dirty, sneaking, female. Now, why did you have to do that? To be alone with you. Yeah, well, that's very interesting. 
Last time we were alone together, you nearly knocked the block off. I'm glad I did. Thank you. You see, when I kissed you... Now, don't you mean when you slugged me? No, when I kissed you earlier. Oh, that time. Wasn't it I who kissed you? When we kissed each other. Well, later, after that, it just happens I felt something. Go on. I felt fond of you. That's so. Well, when did you, um, when did you begin to feel this feeling? When I slugged you. Oh. And ever since, it's been even more so or worse. You know, this is no good. You're, you're the author of a book against this sort of thing. You begin to look quite wonderful to me. Isn't that horrible? Awful. Isn't there anything we can do about it? Well, there must be something. Hey! Mitch says tell you some fine date you are, leaving her with a bowl of chowder. You've got another thing coming, she says, if you think she's gonna put up with this kind of short order hash maroon from you. Also, she is going home. So are. Golly, where is she? What makes her so important? She don't take no stuff from nobody. Unless she wants to. And she takes anything is nailed down. Well, I think it's disgusting. Why any woman could get a man like that if she wanted to. I know I could. Couldn't I? You don't have the stuff it takes to take the stuff you don't have. Oh, I don't, don't I? Okay, Potsy. You're going to dance. Why? No back to a Glocky. You dance divine. Sure. Me and Gold is one contest. <laughs> you could do with a couple of lessons yourself. Oh, I could. Well... No offense, you understand. I speak with Frank here. Well, I haven't danced much. It figures. How come it figures? Anybody can see you don't know the score. Oh, I don't know the score, huh? A girl would come to a joint like this, in a dress like that. <laughs> she don't add up. Well, for your information, I do add up. To what? How would you like a big breath of fresh air? Why? This way. Mm, 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 mm. I love the smell of the sea, don't you? I don't go for them fish canneries, but let, let's, let's go in. Oh, no, no, wait. Oh, isn't the water beautiful? It's full of diesel oil from them tuna boats. They uh, pump it out of their bilges. I mean, the way it looks. Well, it looks all right to me. Why? It's beautiful. It's very dirty. Oh, look at that moon up there. What about it? Kind of a special moon tonight, don't you feel? No, no. But doesn't it make you think of something? Gosh, I forgot to turn off the gas under the double boiler. A <laughs> goalie's gonna kill me dead. Come back here. What's up? Don't play so innocent. You know what moonlight's for. Yeah, but I'm a married man. You're so right. Oh, gee, Goldie. Oh, hello. We were just saying it's brighter out here than it is inside. Yeah. <laughs> well, if it gets too bright out here, somebody's going to find a couple of dark rings around a couple of their eyes. A ball of man moochers I ever saw. Hey, Goldie, I forgot to turn off the gas under the double boiler. Oh, then you're going to have to eat those chicken livers all by yourself. But they'll be all burnt up to a crisp. Oh, so am I, right now. And if you don't want to get singed, you better get in there and order me some beer. Okay, Goldie. Now then, Miss Love Pirate, how would you care to step into the powder room for a brief row? Not especially. March, you homewrecker. All right, but quit your shoving. Goldie and me. What's happened? She caught me making passionate advances to that floozy you shoved off on me. <laughs> you mean Dorinda? Then you wouldn't believe it. That dame got me out there in the dark, and she wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm not used to dames like her. 
And I'm surprised at you associating tramps like her in a party with my wife. You know, Bill, Goldie's a nice girl. She's sweet. Two beers. Yeah, sweet. That is for up to now. Anything from now on goes double. And if you want a permanent twist to your little pink ear, just repeat that disgusting performance I saw out there on the porch. You husband snatcher. Let me handle her, please, Midge. Of all the nerdy girls, you certainly take the cake for gall. Grabbing a posse right under my nose. You can have him. Oh, thank you. Well, for your information, I got him. And I'm going to keep him, see? He's all yours. Well, will you kindly explain what I saw between you and him out there in the dark? I didn't know it was him. Oh, honestly. Is that all you have to say about this matter? One thing more. This only proves that struggles over men produce emotional storms that lead to unhappiness for the unfortunate woman. Let me tell you a few things. First, is Potsy worth the anguish and misery you feel right now? Oh, sure he is. Secondly, at this moment, wouldn't you be happier if you'd never known Potsy? Yes. No, of course not. Say, why are you sticking up for my husband? Because he's a nice guy. Let us not blind ourselves to facts, my dear Midge. He is a jerk. Well, that may be. But he's the nicest jerk you'll ever know. Just because I know him, do I have to feel... wretched? Who does he think he's torturing? You know what it is about Goldie? Something that doesn't show? Goldie has got, and I mean this, character. Well, that can't hurt her. As a matter of fact, I'm glad for your sake. I don't mean that you haven't got it, too. Character. Another beer from my wife. Here she comes. Making me suffer. Now, Goldie. You too, you too. You're all alike. Is this my beer? Yeah. Honestly, I don't know why a woman lets a man torment her so. You know, it's none of my business if you were raised in a barn like you act. But in my social set, we do not throw the harpoon into another woman's husband, with or without she is present. I agree. Potsy was a big mistake. Uh -huh. I was only trying an experiment. Actually, I was aiming at another party. Which would be my date, am I right? Will you lay off? And fair warning, good men are hard to find. Especially on Saturday night. Goose like you. Shall we trade? Not so fast, little Miss Grabby. I am an old-fashioned girl with old-fashioned ideas. Well, so am I. If you won't trade, can I buy him from you? For cash? And I'll throw in Goose for nothing. It's not ethical. The very idea? I never heard of such a thing. Swapping off a boyfriend for cash money? Honestly, Dorinda, I don't approve of your technique or methods either. Will you do it? Certainly not. Maybe I don't wear a, a beautiful, expensive gown like yours, but I wouldn't do a shoddy thing like that. Do you like this dress? Oh, certainly. It's, it's gorgeous. But that's beside the point. I will trade you this dress for Bill Shelby. That dress for bit. No, I couldn't. What size? That zipper. Is it any better to do it for a dress? Oh, no money changes hands. <laughs> but is it ethical? Oh, are men ethical? Uh, I got a conscience. You've got a new dress. But I'm making promise. She likes me. Be reasonable, Goose. Why should she like you? Hmm. Suppose you think I'm too dumb for her or something else. Why should I think something else? You are too dumb for her. But I, I'm affectionate. I'll take care of her affection from here on. Well, don't I get something out of this? Here it comes. You and me are through. Any questions? Why argue? Come on, Goose. You're in. <laughs> Should I struggle? Bartender, I'll have a beer. Yes, sir.
look at us. Whatever happened to Dorinda? Oh, that trip? I gave her car fare. What's this act for? I modernized. Don't you think this little number has a lot of appeal? Appeal for what? For men. Oh, this is such an obvious... But that's what men like the obvious. Oh, cut it out. I only did it to please you. That dress. Well, you seem to like it on Midge. Well, on Midge it fits. Me too. This, this kind of thing is just not your style. No. No. George. My name's Al. And mine's Jody. Shall we dance, Al? Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. Wait a minute, partner. What's the idea? Oh, this is my girl. I'm cutting in. A perfect stranger, Al. Oh. Oh. Up. This fellow grabbed me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Why, Bill. Oh, Goose, I am so sorry. Don't worry, little gal. I'll protect you. <laughs> Rocking back there in the joint, and now I'm not a peep out of you. I'm thinking. What's to think? Oh, nothing. What do you think? Oh, nothing. Naturally. Is this what you'd call a romantic night? Yes. The night air, the smell of the honeysuckle, and that moon up there. A romantic night always has a moon and a you, doesn't it? They say. Who was the you last night and the night before? And who's going to be the you tomorrow night? I'd like you to be the you. You really feel it all? Yes. I don't. Oh, but Eddie, oh I know I was crazy. Something got into me. Now that we've had our romantic night, I can see it's all mechanical. If you don't press the buttons, the wheels don't turn. You don't have to feel these things. Only you do. No. I don't believe you. Turn off the honeysuckle, Mr. Shelby. Thank you for a lovely evening. Oh, thank you, too. Good night. Oh, I suppose now you're angry with me. That's right. You see, it's even automatic that you're angry with me. Yeah, sure. You would have made love to me. Said things to me. Yes, I would. But first, I'd take your hand so you couldn't get away. 
Then I'd plant the kiss on that little vein at the side of your neck, where the blood comes up from your heart. Then I'd kiss the other side so you wouldn't feel off balance. Then your hair, from the shimmer of it right down to the roots, down to every nerve. Then I'd put my arm around you and take you over to that swing at the dark end of the porch. We'd sit, listen to the crickets, just kind of kind of breathe in the night. The honeysuckle, like you said. Maybe we'd watch the moon go into the clouds. And I'd be holding you very gently. Your head on my shoulder, telling you what having you and holding you always could mean to me. How much it mattered. I'd wait for you to whisper that, that you wanted me to. And then, then I'd turn your face to mine. Kiss you. Only, you wouldn't feel a thing. Because machinery doesn't feel. It just moves when you press the button. I'm not sure. Dorinda, you tell your Aunt Alice what was going on out there. Nothing, I'm afraid. As if anything could happen to her. Oh, you'd like it. You planned this. I had nothing whatever to do with it. It was entirely her own idea. Her own idea. Fiddlesticks. Yes. I thought of it all by myself. Oh, Dorinda, darling. <laughs> Spring's coming. The ice is breaking up. I never thought I'd live to see the great thaw. I thought I'd stop by and see how the national defense is getting along. See, I've been reading this. I wouldn't believe you wrote a book. Do you like it? Honestly, now, Hatch. You must have written this with your foot in your cheek or something. It's thoroughly squirrely, not like you at all. That's the real me. Ha! <laughs> I've seen you in action. You're a terror. Dynamite. It was you that caused all the trouble between Goldie and Popsy. What trouble? Hey, you only wrote this for the money, didn't you? Might have at that. Okay, then. I was worried perhaps you wanted I should give up my way of life. What did I do to Goldie and Potsy? Plenty. Well, it may look that way from your point of view. Do you know what you need? I? What? A banana split. Is that all I need? Hey, how come you knew I was working in the PX? I called the commanding general. Do you mean to say that General Schofield knows that I'm working here? A major general. By the way, have you seen Bill? Too bad that redhead hadn't landed him. Who? Oh. Mm, that fire wagon they say he married. Bill got married? No, honey. I'm talking about the general. 
You did come here to discuss military tactics, didn't you? As a matter of fact, I wondered if you knew where Bill is. Oh, I can find him when I'm looking for him. Where is he? I'm not looking for him. Do you like this blouse? Now, keep your shirt on, Hatch. You and me are making no more deals where I get shut out in the cold. I gave you one crack at him. How'd you behave? Like a hog in a manger. How is Bill? Having a lot of fun? No, well, he's kind of crowded with two living in his trailer. Two? He must be pressed for room. Yeah, he's pretty pressed. Kind of crowded, two in one trailer. You want nuts on this? Huh? Oh. Still, they're built for two. Yeah, but not for all them beer bottles. Well, has he been drinking? Well, not him so much. You? Uh, but Patsy. Patsy? Well, yeah. What did you think? Ever since Goldie read your book, poor old Patsy had a pack of pajamas and his GI shoes and moved to Bill. My book did it? All on account of you. Is that what happened? Hey! Where you going? Your banana split! Do you want a banana split? No, thank you. You're kind of new around here, aren't you? Three days. Well, son, in the army, when somebody asks us, do we want a banana split, what do we say? Yes, ma'am. That'll be 30 cents. When I wrote the book, I wasn't thinking of you and Patsy. On page 99, you say, a woman who pulls with all her heart in the tug of war of marriage may end up with a big jerk, Patsy. I didn't mean that kind of jerk. Only talk to him, will you? How? In pig Latin? Be nice. To that self-centered male bigot? How can you say that? Because you did on page 104. He loves you, Goldie. There it is. No wonder it took me so long to find. Come on. I'll wait. You promise. Come on. This is against my better principles. both of them. Let's go. Look, I got you into this, and I'm getting you out. You certainly contradict your book. Open that door. Nobody here but us chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I am plain disgusted. Let's go. Hush up while I think. If Potsy won't move, we'll move him. Come on. Honestly, the way you pull people around. What I say is, is women and women. A woman will always stick by another woman. Once a woman, always a woman. Well, you said it.
your home. Home, sweet home. It takes a woman to make a home. And another woman to wreck it. What's this all about? Potsy won't come out. Why not? Well, Goldie here believes in one sort of thing, and naturally, Potsy wouldn't. I don't understand. So, Potsy moved out, and now he's in with Bill, and Bill only makes things worse because I can't get Potsy out to explain. Who's the driver in this car? Where's the owner? Who's in charge here? Just a minute, officer. You're on a U.S. military reservation. The MPs will handle this. We've got eight violations of the moderate traffic code and 13 violations of the state highway code. Okay, we'll call the Provo Marshal. Get the guardhouse. You write to me in prison? I'll send you cookies. Potsy, you've got to come out now. Do I have to, Bill? No, you sit there. You're not in shape yet. Who started all this? We've got to find this fellow Potsy. What's all this Potsy talk? That's the trouble. Potsy won't talk. Where is he? Where am I? If you ever find out, you'll have a nervous breakdown. Potsy, come help. Talk to Goldie. I'm sick. The United States Army is going to make you sicker if you're late for Reveille one more time. Captain Philby told me. So I sleep late, so I'm late for Reveille, so they bust me to a private. Who cares? I care. You big dumb boob. So join the wax yourself. Go to Reveille yourself. Tell him you read that book and they'll put you in the armored forces. I hate him. I hate him. Oh, thank heavens, Dorinda, you opened my eyes to that flying saucer I married. Now, Potsy! What's this all about? Something about a flying saucer, sir. Great Scott, have they notified the Pentagon? Let me through here. Pentagon? Who <laughs> saw this flying saucer? He did, Colonel. <laughs> oh, Goldie, don't cry. No need to be hysterical. You, Sergeant, inform the commanding general. Yes, sir. <laughs> Traps woman in emotional slavery. Oh, shut up, shut up. Will you forget my stupid book? Stupid? But you're in Yes, it. I said stupid. It's full of lies and silly nonsense. And you're a silly, stupid girl to believe it. Hear that music? Well, what do you know? It's a trick to get me out of here. My book is breaking your heart because you really want that man in there. Even if he is an idiot. You've got to realize I was wrong. I never should have written that book. Well, I like Attention. that. After I laid out two bucks and practically memorized Goldie, the... forget every word of it. It's rubbish. All that matters is that you love Potsy. Oh, well, now I'm all mixed up. So am I. General Schofield. I believe she means it, Potsy. It's too late. No power on earth is going to make me move them pajamas. Hotsy, please, you just got to come out. Who says I got to? Major General Horatio W. Schofield. Yes, sir. And bring those pajamas. At ease, Sergeant. Did you hear me say at ease? Well, yes, sir. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not easy to be at ease, sir. Relax. Come here. Carry on, Miss Hatch. Here's your man. Potsy, I'm sorry. I caused all the trouble between you and Goldie. I apologize. Okay. Potsy, you know that underneath, in spite of my terrible book, Goldie really loves you. I don't know if I do. Well, of course you do. If he doesn't? Of course he does. Who says? I do. Yes, sir. Isn't it worth it? Don't you really want each other? Well, if he does. Well, don't you, Potsy? After Goldie came and met you over halfway? Don't you want her? Well, what if I do? Oh, gee, kid, that's it. But how do I know you want me? If I say so? Yeah, only you say so if and when I gotta say so first. Would that kill you? Well, why should I stick my neck out? Sir, it's your neck. Go ahead, stick it out. What can you lose? I gotta love her before I know if she... I mean, do I, sir? Golly, Potsy, you're the man. 
Yeah. It can't take that away from you. Well, <laughs> now we got that straightened out, give me that book. Here, all yours. There, all yours. Goldie, honey, I'm going way out on a limb with this. But if you don't know I love you, you're nuts. Say it again. You're nuts. About you, you devil. In case I never told you, I would go through fire and also water for you. Would you, Patsy? Fire and water. Uh, just a minute, fella. That's your trailer over there? Yes, that's my trailer. That's your driver's license. Yeah. Uh, Dorinda! It's your driver's license. Yeah, but I wasn't driving. I was just sitting in the yeah, bay. Dorinda! Wanna... Hey, fella, the driver's license. No, uh, I, I was sitting with a friend, and I don't want to come to this camp. Packing. Well, tell us, darling, is there anything wrong? Me? Well, can I help, dear? I'm sorry, Aunt Alice, but you can't. And neither can you. Both of you quarreled and scrapped until I lost track of which is love and which is hate. But I'm through being your punching bag and your referee and your battleground. I'm going to help myself. Oh, darling. If I hadn't come back, she wouldn't be walking out on you. No, Matt. It's just that she doesn't need me anymore. No, of course she does. Dorinda. Yes? How can you do this? How can you leave your Aunt Alice? It's not easy, Uncle Matt, but it's high time. I'm a big girl now with a little unfinished business that's all my own. But she depends on you. Naturally. Who else can she depend on? It's all my fault. No, Matt, please. Now, don't worry about me. I... I have the house and your pension money. I'll get along somehow. Living here alone, this empty house? Who will you talk to? The postman. The milkman. The milkman. Don't you realize when that girl walks out of here, you face loneliness. Well, if that's all I've earned, I deserve no better. Well, great heavens. Maybe we deserve no better, but Dorinda's right. It's high time we earn something better. Sit down a minute. There's something I've got to tell you that may be a bit of a shock. Mm -hmm. What is it, Matt? Well, maybe I should have told you years ago, but, uh, well, I, I couldn't. Well, go on, say it if you have to, Matt. Alice. I love you. Obviously, I'm only in the way around here. Oh, Dorinda! Kiss me goodbye. Don't you love me anymore? I love you both. I hope you'll both be happy. Where do you think you're going? Away. Why? To find myself. Are you lost? Can I help? If you please. Step this way. Now, if you're really trying to find yourself, I have some secret information about where you are. 
Where? You are a poor, misguided little girl who got herself all tangled up about sex. Who wrote a poor, misguided, tangled up book about sex that was read by hundreds of thousands of poor, misguided people who were all tangled up about sex. You follow me? So why don't you call that a bad job and do better? Wait a minute. Of any help. Start me off. Page one, chapter one. Everything that's printed in a book is not necessarily so. But it could be. A new book. A new book. 27 Ways to Say Yes by Dorinda Hatch. And something tells me. It's going to be a big, long book. <laughs> 